How old? Welcome to Heating Geeks and the oldest combi boiler repair on YouTube. For now, until proven wrong. Part one is linked here somewhere. Somewhere here. So as you're all fully aware, part one, the first visit, I should have linked out their micro switches. And that is something I'll come to regret massively in this visit. So I did manage to get the parts for this job. It took a little while, two different suppliers, one who just fobbed me off and lied and all sorts. But anyway, two different suppliers. Eventually I got the parts through the post, no problem with the second supplier. And just for you guys that are trying to help and suggest places I can get the parts, this job was completed before the first video was ever uploaded. So this is part one of the second visit. I had to split this visit up into at least two videos because it just took so long. Uh, it took so long that I ran out of batteries on cameras and all sorts. Um, so it would have gone a lot smoother if I was better prepared, and that's my own fault. If I was better prepared, this would never have happened. And you'd probably be watching it all in one video. So there are three lessons to learn from this video, and I'll talk about all three at the end. I certainly learned my lesson from this. Let's get to it. Hello. We're back here again. Parts finally arrived. Let's see if we can get this 40-year-old boiler fixed. Get going. I'll bring you down here, you can watch all this. First, let's do this. Oh, easy. Bit of WD 40, eh? Okay, let's get on with this. Just going to loosen these today. I remembered. That makes it a little bit brighter in here. So the power's off, the water's off. So these are two gas lines here. We'll gently pull this away, gently, so that we can get this piece out. Okay, so here she is. That's what we're going to change. We've moved everything out of the way. How old is that packaging?
So now we're going to take on that. There you go. Can you see in there? That's what we're going to be changing. Let's see what size socket it is. Using the new one. Oh, I hope I got it. Oh, it's only 13. That's I made the assumption it was going to be a 13, but it's not, so I may have a wee problem here. Anyway, let's see if I can find another socket. It's time to go to the van. While I go to the van, I'm just going to add a bit of magic. So here's one good thing about having a tailgate on a van. It is chucking it down and I'm just about to cut that up and um, I can do it here in the dry. Well, there we go. I now got a 15mm socket. One slightly edited box spanner. For a minute I thought it wasn't going to fit. Okay, so that goes on there, no problem. Tap, tap, tap. I'd be upset if a load of water came out of this now. Beautiful. Let's get our little washer out of there. Give it a grease and put a new one in. Get a little bit of grease on that. A bit for the threads and a bit for the spindle. Why not? Looks all right. Water time. So when the water goes on, hopefully we'll see that little bit of grease move to show there was some movement in the system. I hope you can turn it back on. Bless him, the guy is 84. He doesn't want me in this house, I don't think. Which is fair enough, considering what's going on. But obviously, if he can't turn it back on, I've got to go in the house. There you go. Ah, he got it back on. So now we're just going to give it a few minutes and make sure we don't have any leaks and then we get the micro switch back in and we see if we've got this baby working. The only thing we have to consider here is the old micro switch had, uh, had had a problem, it had short circuited. That may well have damaged uh, wherever the live wire goes and what I should have done last time I was here I should have manually linked them out ran a hot tap had them linked out and seen if the boiler worked I didn't do that so right now we, we're aware we are there's nothing I can do and there's one thing I should have done though okay let's get this in this tiny little screw wants to fall off my screwdriver so dip my screwdriver in grease and put it on there now it won't go anywhere so got that back in there you can see where that point lines up 
that I scratched on previously so we know that micro switch is in the right place now we just got to see if it works so what I'm going to do now I hope you can see the micro switch in there I'm going to move these a little bit maybe I'm going to go and ask the gentleman to turn the tap on and off oh that look good okay so all of that's it's all good in there no leaks anything like that so now we're going to try and get this back together and then we're going to test these joints here because obviously they're gas joints and we're going to check the connections where they go so we're going to check this one up here and uh, the other one goes through there to the pilot we're going to check that as well What a boiler, what a boiler. I don't know if you can see it, so. Right, I'm gonna check these connections here with LDF and then we'll see if the boiler's fixed. If it is, safety check time. Beautiful. By the way, 15 litre expansion vessel on this, which we're not going to go near. While it's working, it's working. This is a gently, gently approach to boiler repair. It looks good though. I'm going to go get the uh, power back on. Okay, customer's going to do that now. Power's back on. Shall we ask him to run the hot tap? We put the heating off. I'm going to put that off as well. I'm going to get him to run a hot tap and then I'm going to turn it on. Wait, I am getting soaked. Let's listen for the click. Maybe it already happened. While I, oh, there we go. It clicked. Oh. Oh. It's not to be. That's a shame. It's breaking my heart now. So as you can see, I'm really, really stressed out here. Um, if I'd have just read the manual, RTFM, I wouldn't be having in this situation here now clicking buttons. It's time to look at the wiring diagram. Oh, I'm so disappointed. Should have checked that, should have linked that out, shouldn't I? It'd be nice if this was Warafudge. What if I check flow switch? Let's have a look. I'm looking at stuff here in German. I don't even understand what I'm looking at. Okay, let's see what we can do here. Getting to turn the power off. So let's go do that. This boiler is that old, I should just be able to look at the wires and see where they go. See, should have done my check. Should have went that little tiny bit further and done that extra check to prove it was going to work once that was done. Because look where I am now, taking this thing back apart. Come on. I should maybe check that I have A and B round the right way, yeah? Shall we do that? I think we shall. 
A has grey, blue, grey, black. Or brown, blue, brown, black, yeah. Okay, so now let's look for two browns and two blacks going to two micro switches. A, number one, and B, number nine. A, number one, B, number nine. I'm going to do it on beep so you can hear it. And then we should have continuity between A, number one, and B number eight. Oh, I haven't put it on beep. Here we go. Beep. So that's working. Micro switch is working on that one. Let's have a look if it works on the other one. Which is this one. And this one. The micro switch now works. Come on. We'll, we'll get this. We'll get this. Could there be a separate fuse for hot water? I mean, could there be? Help oh, me. I don't know. I'm going to take this board out and have a look at it. Somehow, I don't know how it comes out. Alright, I'm going to get my head torch on. Have a close look at this. Whoa, there we go. I can't see nothing wrong with that. There's nothing wrong with this that I can see. Should work. Let's, let's keep it simple. Keep it simple. Let's see if the heating works. Be careful, don't be reckless. Oh, oh, something's moved. That's not good. Be careful. Don't be reckless. So something definitely just hot water related, unless we've messed something up. In which case, let's have a look at the connection so in case we screw something up. Oh, that looks good, okay. That looks good. That's okay, come on, come on. Connections look good. Does heat some work, that's the next thing, right? And maybe I'm missing something really simple. I cannot see anything wrong here, obviously. Could I have? Put the thing of overheated somehow. Like it just reset. Okay, the overheat felt like it just reset. I'm not 100% sure, but it did feel a bit more clicky than I would have expected. I don't know. We'll see, you're going to stay with me for this one. Might get boring as hell, but that's what's going to happen. I'll get ya. I'll get ya, don't you worry. Let's try and light it again, eh? It's first time again. Okay. All good. Yeah, ain't much I can do now. Let's see if the heating works. I'll be back. Okay, let's see if this puppy's gonna work. Otherwise, a little bit of head scratching is gonna follow. I wonder if you've seen something that I haven't. 
What could it be? Kiss. Got to keep remembering that. Kiss. There we go. Got power now. Okay. So we know it works for heating. Oh. We've got a hot plate right now. Now we've got heat leaving the boiler. Hmm, was that doing hot water then? Oh, it's baking. Okay. Should we see what happens when we run the hot tap now? That's definitely the hot water knob. Let's see what happens now when we run a hot tap. You're going to see it first. Let me tilt this up a little bit. Let's see what happens. Right. There you go, he's run a hot tap, the boiler's firing. So the boiler had overheated, because now with the heating off the hot water on, no preheat, he should have hot water coming out the tap. Thank God for that. It overheated. It had overheated. Kiss. You see how I could have lost my head and went crazy there. Looking for a fault. And I thought, let me just touch that overheat. So I'm going to get him to turn his tap off now and the boiler should go off. That's what we're hoping for the boiler goes off when he turns the tap off we're going to turn the tap on again make sure the boiler fires again if it does do that i'm going to safety check it yes turn the water off now please yes please so we should hear a click and the boiler should go off i heard a click i don't know what this means i think that means preheat so the old demand is gone, the boiler won't shut off until it gets too hot and the diverter, the wax capsule diverter moves over. I'm surmising here. So I just want to see what if that happens. Okay. Flame went off, we don't know why. The flow is getting hot now. Yeah, flow is getting hot. Shouldn't be because apparently the heating's off. So let's turn the hot tap on, we'll see if that boiler fires now. It's running it, it's lit and fired, turn it off, it's gone off. Run the tap for 10, turn off, good. So the demand is working on that. So that's perfect. That's working exactly how it's meant to. Your battery's low, so I'm going to change that in a sec. But So that's all now working, firing for hot water. Let's go get the heating on again and check what this diverter here does. So as you can see, I regretted that micro switch thing this visit badly, because I didn't know all the other problems that there were with this appliance. We're not done yet with problems, by the way. The three lessons, the three things you should take away from this video are number one, go that little bit further on your initial visit. Take your diagnosis that tiny bit further and would help you eliminate a lot of additional problems. Remember, this boiler hasn't run properly for hot water for many years. Number two, check the boiler on arrival. When I arrived, this boiler wouldn't have been working, but I didn't check it. 
It had overheated between visits, and because I didn't check it, I was none the wiser. I went down a rabbit hole and I probably wasted 45 minutes on that. 35 to 45 minutes. Obviously, you guys don't get to watch that disaster. You get the edited version, which shows you the highlights. And the very most important thing I learned, number three, is RTFM. Read the manual. If I'd have just made a cup of tea at home, found the manual online and had a read, I would have understood the sequence of operation of the boiler, I would have understood exactly what the buttons on the front of it did, and I would also understand how the gas valve and diverter valve work, so I wouldn't be fumbling around in the dark here. But right now, what you see in this visit, I didn't read it. I didn't know the sequence of operation, didn't know how the gas valve worked exactly, knew some fundamentals around it, but didn't know exactly how it worked. Same with the diverter valve. It's only an old boiler, how difficult can it be? So an hour at home with a cup of tea in the manual probably would have saved me two or three hours on this job total. Should have done it. So join me, part two, visit two, very soon, because it's nearly edited already. So, any idea why the boiler overheated? Put it in the comments. Let's see. Some of you old boys probably know. We'll see. Like, subscribe, all that stuff. Remember I'm on library where you can download all my content for free. Uh, I'll leave a link for that in the description. Thanks a lot. See you later.